Hi everyone, Ian here. So today I'm going to be talking about my time with the Framework laptop, what I like and what I dislike and how I've got on with it. I'm going to be talking about the 11th gen version, which probably seems strange given that we're waiting on the announced 12th gen version being delivered soon. But before it's released, I wanted to give some final thoughts on the original. And I didn't want to bundle my thoughts on a specific OS that I'm using along with the hardware. So if you want to hear some thoughts I have on Linux specific issues that I've hit, then take a look at my Ubuntu on the framework video. I'm sure you're aware, if you're watching this, that this is Framework's first laptop and its build is one that is completely upgradable. So every part within it can be replaced if you ever want to upgrade or replace broken parts. In fact, Framework apps actively encourages you to do so by including a nifty little screwdriver and spudger tool that can completely disassemble the entire machine. I picked up the i5 1135G7 DIY version, which was the cheapest of all their mainboard offerings at the time, and it cost me 882 or slightly less than dollars in total. This being the DIY kit, I provided my own 16GB of RAM and 1TB hard disk from the components that I already had available, and you can see a full video of me setting it up from scratch, complete with OS install on my channel, and I'll link to it below too. As Framework is upgradable, my thinking behind this was that it allows me to check out the laptop and see if I like it, and potentially to upgrade it to something more powerful at some point in the future, should I ever need to, or if Framework releases newer versions. Framework was then, and is now, a new company, having only been around a year or so, and is still fairly young in the grand scheme of things. The machine itself is an all aluminium design, with Framework's minimal logo on the top cover. On the underside, there's a number of vents and rubber strips to raise it up to it and allow air movement. In a world of black plastic PC laptops, I like the aluminium design, and it makes it feel far more premium than other PC laptop offerings. It obviously looks very similar to MacBooks, and I think this is the type of customer framework are choosing to target it towards. Someone who would pay more of a premium for their hardware. The screen size is 13.5 inches with a brightness of 400 nits at a somewhat unusual aspect ratio of 3 by 2 This gives a resolution of 2256 and 1504 pixels in a taller, slightly thinner screen than you might be used to. You'll get more vertical space for lines of code or documents, and it's billed as a unique feature of the laptop. However, it does lead to some couple of interesting problems. Firstly, it also means that any screen recordings that you'll do need to be cropped or transformed to show without borders at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So if you happen to be somebody who records their desktop for any reason, it's worth considering that's a step you have to go through before publishing them. I also found that it's quite a bit taller than my external Dell monitor here that I'm using it with. Uh, so the Dell monitor will not reach above it where other machines that aren't quite as tall will fit quite neatly beneath it. And it kind of makes me wonder if the aspect ratio of 3 by 2 is a likely necessary decision that's had to be made to accommodate the way it's upgradable and the battery and the mainboard are arranged in the chassis rather than it being like a principal design choice. Packed into the screen is also a 1080p webcam which comes complete with privacy switches for when you're not using it, which is nice. The screen is also pretty reflective, meaning that in a lot of my footage that you'll see, you'll see my reflection of me filming it as well. The screen in the top cover does have quite a bit of flex to it, and it's something that I've been often mentioned in other reviews. The hinge that holds it up also isn't as rigid as I would like, so it'll wobble quite a bit if you happen to have a wobbly desk, though Framework have released a stronger 4kg version that you can purchase or replace to remedy this. It's great that this Framework's uh, making updates like this, and that they actually trust customers to be able to replace them in their own machines. One of the other features of this laptop, of course, is the modular ports, which allow you to swap out the default arrangement of four USB-C ports to any other expansion card that Framework offer. There's options for HDMI 2, DisplayPort, USB-A and USB-C, microSD, and even offerings to increase expansion. Coming soon, there's also a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet expansion card too. These are all fairly reasonably priced compared to, say, Apple, but you could equally grab yourself a dongle featuring many, many of these for a bit cheaper. The ability to switch the arrangement is useful, meaning that you only have the ports that you want when you need them, but it's unlikely you can be switching between them too often once you've chosen where they go. You also could opt 
not to buy any of the ports, given that there's actually four USB-C connections tucked inside the spaces for each module, though it's going to look a bit strange on your laptop if you did. I've noticed here that the modules are not entirely flush with the side of the laptop if you happen to run your finger along it, which is a small niggle that I have. The laptop is powered over USB-C using any of the USB-C ports. You can either use the official 60 watt GAN charger at additional cost to the laptop or an equivalent USB-C charger which you already have. It's a 55 kilowatt hour battery which I found charges in a little over two hours during use. Battery life unfortunately hasn't been that good for me as I'm using Ubuntu. Um, it gives me about 4.5 hours worth of usage, but I fully expect this to be better under an operating system that's better op optimised for battery management, though it does seem to be a common uh, problem with this laptop. The trackpad is glass and works well when I've been using it. I tend to mostly use an external mouse, so I've not really been using it all day. It does have a very pronounced physical click on it, and I've noticed a couple of times that it's not picked up clicks under Ubuntu, and I think this is probably the hardware more than the OS. The angle slant at the front of the trackpad where it meets the top cover also feels pretty sharp, like it isn't sitting perfectly flush. The keyboard has 1.5mm of travel and is complete with an adjustable backlight. The keys have a good feel to them, but they don't feel completely solid, which is kind of to be expected as, chassis, as the chassis isn't a solid piece of aluminium, and it results in more of a hollow feel when the machine on the machine when you're tapping it with it on your lap. The backlight brightness is triggered through the use of the function key and spacebar, and there isn't a button to lower the brightness, so you have to cycle through each step to get to the brightness you want. The function keys seem like they're in strange order to me. Uh, it's particularly weird as the first one's on the top row, and it's quite different to most keyboards I own, which are mainly Logitech or Mac variants, where they tend to be on the right, and it does mean that I end up hunting around for them myself. The fingerprint reader works, but has been pretty problematic for me under Ubuntu, and it's required me to pretty get, be very careful about using it. It's only let me in about 30% of the time and it's often quicker for me to type my password and stab repeatedly at the reader. I do hope with time that Linux drivers might be improved to resolve this. I found that Framework is more than capable for most of my dev tasks that I have. Um, I use it for web development work and running multiple Docker containers side by side. Where it does show problems it was, is with any type of video work where the fan will kick in and it's particularly loud. There's no dedicated GPU here, so this is really geared at running the mill office work than say editing media or gaming. I ran the Python performance benchmark test and well, you can see how loud the fan gets here. Yeah, ramping up there. Noise is a particular bugbear of mine, and I'd struggled to think straight with the fan going at full blast. Notice that I say fan and not fans, there's only a single fan here on the main board, so it needs to run particularly fast to shift air. The speakers are downward facing and slightly pretty awful. I tend to use Bluetooth headphones most of the time, so it's not a big issue, though it would be nice to have something that doesn't sound worse than my existing 7 year old MacBook. One of the main features here is obviously the laptop's upgradability. It's really nice to see such great documentation on components and how to service them, accessible by the many QR codes throughout the machine. It's also nice to see continuous improvements from the framework team, like the launch of the marketplace to purchase replacement components. This means we don't have to go through a service centre or talk to a Blue Shirt employee to fix some broken hardware. We simply buy it ourselves from the website directly from them. I would note that shipping is quite expensive, however, at £24 for me in the UK, so you probably want to use it for combined orders only. In fact, I looked at buying every component from the laptop to see how, just how much the total cost would come to, which is possible, as you might expect, it ends up being quite a bit more expensive than the laptop itself. As I mentioned, I pre-ordered my framework when batches were eventually released to countries in Europe on 14th of April this year. This is a lot later than customers in the US who were able to pre-order straight away in summer 21 and started receiving them later that year. Within just over a month of my order, Framework announced the updated 12th gen version of the laptop on the 19th of May. Most of the laptop remains the same in this version except for the main board and the top cover which is replaced with CNC's version to improve its rigidity. It's slightly more expensive at $20 or pounds than the 11th gen 
uh, when it was when it was released and it also is comes as an upgrade kit for existing users so they don't need to replace their entire system only supplying the components that are different these kits are pretty expensive however a little over half the cost of the machine itself but at least we have the option of being able to replace only the components we need as opposed to the entire machine What's nice about this is it can be seen as framework actually delivering on the promise of a fully upgradable machine with these updates. Many other manufacturers have tried to do so this in the past and have failed. However, I imagine that quite a few of us in Europe who have been eagerly waiting for framework's launch may feel a little bitter it was that it was replaced so quickly since it resolves a number of the issues I talk about here and would give them that much requested 12th gen CPU as well. Since the update announcements, the 11th gen version is available at a $100 discount, though some versions are no longer available. So this means you can pick up the 11th gen Intel at $769 for the DIY version, meaning that it ends up being $140 or £120 cheaper than the 12th gen version, which is not a bad saving. However, the 12th gen is reported to be a significant upgrade with 8 more CPU cores for even the lower end i5 model, so hopefully it will perform much better than its current mainboard. It's due to be have the first batches released to buyers out this month, so we'll soon find out. You'll hear in my Framework Linux video that I struggled switching between my Mac Mini and Linux while testing out things for these reviews as I've been using macOS as my primary OS now for mostly a decade. I'm ultimately faster on the machine using macOS but I do wish I could use it on other hardware without jumping through hoops on something like say a Hackintosh. Sadly, that's never going to happen. At this point I've actually sent back my framework so that I could get the 12th gen version and I'm hoping to review it soon but I'm still on the fence as to whether or not it can make it work as a primary machine for me. This isn't my last video on the 11th gen though, as I was recently lucky enough to be gifted the main board as part of the Frameworks developer program, and I'm looking forward to building it into a future project. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I'm definitely a big Framework fan, and I'm looking forward to seeing how the 12th gen performs. Let me know if you're thinking of picking one up and which version you're going for in the comments. Also, be sure to subscribe for future projects. Bye for now. And be sure to actually be recording before you put the hood on and <laughs> can't see anything. So the 11th gen version is available um, at 100 percent discount. The 11th gen version is available at 100 pound. 100. That's 100 dollars, mate. Say 100 dollars. The 11th gen version is available. <coughs> Do you mind?